Hey guys, in a previous video I showed you that if we have a second order homogeneous differential equation like this, then x equals e to the lambda t is a solution to this equation if and only if lambda is equal to this. I've shown that in a previous video. Now, you may have guessed that this means there are two values of lambda, one of which is lambda 1, I'll call it lambda 1, which is minus zeta omega n plus omega n times the square root of zeta squared minus 1, and the other one corresponds to the other root, which is what I'll call lambda 2, which is minus zeta omega n minus omega n times the square root of zeta squared minus 1. Okay, so now what we've essentially shown is that x equals e to the lambda 1t is a solution. That's essentially what we've shown. And to really hammer down this point, let me write down what this actually means. It means that if I were to substitute x equals e to lambda 1t into this equation, then we would get zero. So let me write that down for you. That just means that lambda 1 squared e to the lambda 1t, I'm substituting into here now, plus 2 zeta omega n times lambda 1 e to the lambda 1t plus omega n squared, lam oh, not lambda, e to the lambda 1t is going to be equal to zero. That's because this is a solution to this. We can say the exact same for the other solution. We know that x equals e to the lambda 2t is a solution. And this means if we substitute x equals e to the lambda 2t into here, then it will be equal to zero. So let me do that for you right now. There we go, I've written them both out. Okay, now let me ask you an interesting question right now. Is, is the equation x equals a e to the lambda 1t plus b e to the lambda 2t, where a and b are just constants, a solution. Is it a solution? I don't know. That's why I'm putting a question mark next to it. Is this a solution to this equation? x double dot plus 2 zeta omega n x dot plus omega n squared x double dot, uh, sorry, just x equals to zero. Is this a solution to this? I don't know yet. Spoiler alert, it is, but we need to prove it formally. So in order to prove it formally, what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute this into here and show that the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side. So let me do that nice and slowly for you. Let me, let me substitute this into here. So the double derivative term will be equal to a times lambda 1 squared e to the lambda 1t plus b lambda 2 squared e to the lambda 2t. Then we have to worry about this term just here, which is going to be equal to plus 2 zeta omega n times by, let's see, it'll be this term differentiated once, which will be a lambda 1 e to the lambda 1t plus b lambda 2 e to the lambda 2t, right? Now let's add this, now let's consider this term, which is going to be plus omega n squared times by just x, which is just this. So it's going to be a e to the lambda 1t plus, plus b e to the lambda 2t. Okay? Now if, this, now if this is equal to zero, then we have essentially shown that this is a solution. And to do that, let me group all of these blue terms together and factorize out, and let me group all of these green terms together and factorize a b out. So this is what we get when we group all the blue terms together and then factorize an a out, and this is what we get when we group all the blue green terms together and factorize a b out. Now it doesn't look like there's any easy way to show this is equal to zero, but we can by noticing that the terms inside this blue bracket is equal to this which I've written just above right here. So in fact we can say that this is equal to zero, and that's because we know this is a solution. Likewise, we know that this term just here, everything inside this green bracket, is equal to zero for the exact same reasons. This means that this entire term, this entire expression, is equal to a times by zero plus b times by zero, which, as you've probably guessed, is equal to zero, which is equal to your right-hand side of your equation. So we've shown that this, that this, is a solution to this. Left-hand side equals to right-hand side. So this means that this is a solution. x is equal to this beast is a solution. So let's replace this question mark 
with an exclamation mark. We've shown that it is a solution. Okay, now, as a, as a brief aside, we could have also done this by sh um, using something called the superposition theorem in mathematics, but I like to show things from scratch. Okay, now that we've got our very generalized expression here, let me just zoom out a little bit to make some space, and let me substitute the values of lambda 1 and lambda 2 into here so we can find out the actual equation of motion, the generalized equation of motion. Let me, let me paste lambda 1 and lambda 2 just here, just in their own separate world just around the corner. Okay, so let's substitute lambda 1 and lambda 2 into here. What we've essentially shown is x is equal to a e to the lambda 1 t Sorry, I forgot to substitute lambda 1. It's going to be equal to um, minus zeta omega n plus omega n times the square root of zeta squared minus 1. And now let's concern ourselves with this extra term on the side, plus b e to the power of, oops, don't forget there's also a t just here hanging around the side. There's a t times just there, plus b e to the power of this, which is going to be minus zeta omega n minus omega n times the square root of zeta squared minus 1, all times by t as well. Now we can simplify this out a little bit more too. Notice that both of these expressions have the same common term minus zeta omega n minus zeta omega n, so we can factorize that out. We can write this as e, sorry, x, x is going to be equal to um, e, let me write it in orange, e to the power of minus zeta omega n, all times by, all times by a, e to the omega n, times the square root of zeta squared minus 1 t, oops, there's a t out here too, there's a t out here too, plus b, e to the omega n, minus omega n, times the square root of zeta squared minus 1, all times by t. Okay, there we go, almost made a few careless errors, but there we go. This is your generalized equation of motion just here. And now, depending on whether um, zeta is less than 1, then this thing can be simplified further. But notice if zeta is greater than 1, then this thing can't be simplified down further, and this is our generalized equation of motion. Now, so far, a few of you might be thinking, well, hold on, we've only shown that this is one possible solution. There might be more possible solutions, for all we know. As it turns out, there aren't. And for a formal proof into why this is a unique solution, I recommend you go to this link just to the right of this expression.